Hi everyone, this is just uh, the second half of the mock paper two I'm going to go through. Okay, so uh, any problems with these questions or if you're still confused after this explanation, come and see myself or any other maths teachers in the office. Okay, uh, question 12. So uh, this one, this looks like uh, one of these nth term ones, doesn't it really? Uh, a pattern has 20 grey squares. Well, look at this. This has gone two, four, six. So clearly a pattern number doubles to get to the grey squares because one two three two four six so we've got to work out how many white squares there are though in this pattern now if it's got 20 gray squares it must be pattern 10 yeah that's that's what i'm thinking first this is just my thinking um and have you noticed as well that there's always one more white square than the pattern number so the white squares go like this two on pattern one three on pattern two four on pattern three so i guess it's going to be 11 on pattern 10 so i guess that's 11. Um, i haven't got the answers next to me or anything like that so uh, i hope i've got this right <laughs> but uh yeah we shall see um okay find an expression in terms of m for the total number of centimeter squares in pattern n so these are all centimeter squares the white and the gray and we've got to find the total number well as you can see if we're in pattern n yeah, we're going to have to do 2n to get the number of uh, gray squares because the gray squares, it is gray, isn't it? Always double the pattern number. Um, and then we're going to have to add to that, uh, well, the white squares, and that's n plus 1. So it's going to be 2n plus n plus 1. So I guess that's 3n plus 1. Yeah. Um, one of the things which kind of freaks me out on these questions as well, always look at this, is how many marks it's worth. Because if you just put down 11, you know, maybe you're going to miss the method mark and they're just not going to allow it. So it almost might be worth pointing out like, uh, you know, what I've done up here, like, uh, you know, <laughs> and it does seem weird that I know. But, you know, you just got to be careful here. So pattern number. You know, is going to be equal to 20 divided by 2, which is 10. So 10 plus 1, you know, equals 11. Try and make it clear because you never know when they're going to be really ruthless with the method marks. And I don't like that either, students. Like, I really don't. I, sometimes I think well, it's perfectly obvious, but be careful. Yeah, be really careful. If it shows two marks, do two lines of working. Three marks, three lines of working. That's just good advice, I think. OK, anyway, this is an example of a capture, recapture question, this one. This is a way you could estimate the number of ducks in a park or, you know, um, like, uh, you know, they tend to do around animals, bees in a woodland area or something like that. So what they do is they, um, Alex, he wants to know how many ducks there are in a park. So one day he basically captures a load of ducks, 30 of them, and puts a little tag on their foot. Yeah. And the next day he catches 40 and finds eight of these have been tagged. So I guess eight out of 40, yeah, should be, assuming it's in the same proportion to the ones he's been tagged on the first day, should be equal to like 30 over like, you know, the total population. Let's call it N. Yeah, that's essentially what we're going to need to do to try and solve this problem. Yeah, because we're guessing that 840 ifs is in the same ratio as 30 over the total population. I hope you can see why that's the case as well, because, you know, when he just catches these 40 randomly, eight of them have been tagged. So that kind of suggests you know, if you look at this as a percentage, you know, that kind of suggests that he captured 20 percent of you know, you know, of the ducks yesterday. So really, we just need to make sure these agree. And I hope you can see here straight away that as you're, you know, like um, finding, you know, you basically need, the, you know, because 8 is 20 percent of 40. Well, what is 30, 20 percent of? The answer is 150. Yeah. And you can just work that out with equivalent fractions. Like, remember, this is a calculator paper. So, you know, you can easily work out that you'd need to times by 8 by like 3 and 3 quarters. So you need to times 40 by 3 and 3 quarters. And 3 times 40 is 120 and 3 quarters of 30 is 30. So you're going to get 150. Yeah. Um, once again, you know, like uh, <laughs> make sure you're showing enough working. I'm always scared on GCSE that I'm not showing enough. I really am. Um, but hopefully that, you know, sets it up. You could even rearrange this like this. A N equals 30 times 40, which is 1200. And therefore, N is 1200 divided by eight. Well, half of 1200 is 600. Half again is 300. Half again is 150. I know it's calc paper, but that's, you know, that's what I'm thinking in my head. OK, Alex assumed that none of the tags fell off during the night. If Alex's assumption is wrong, explain how this would affect your answer to part one now this can take a little bit of thinking it really can yeah like 
if Alex is, you know, let's, let's, let's assume none of the tags fell off, yeah? Well, if actually some of the tags fell off, if Alex's assumption is wrong, okay, well, all of a sudden, that 8 out of 40 should have been maybe 10 out of 40 because some of the duck's tags ran off. And if you had 10 out of 40 equals 30 over n, now n is only 120, yeah? And so it looks to reduce our answer to the one above. So it looks like, um, yeah. This will this will decrease part one's answer. You know, and the reason is we would have expected more of the ducks to have tags on them, if you see what I mean. As we would expect more than eight ducks to have tags on. Yeah, and that, you know, you can clearly see, you know, then you're getting n is 120. So I hope that kind of makes sense the way I've done that one. It's kind of weird. This one people hated. Um, I was particularly impressed with the people who used the logarithms approach, though, to doing this. It was like, good for you. <laughs> good for you. Now, the easiest way to do this is to write 0.2 as a fifth. Yeah, because then you immediately know what 3 to the power of n is. Yeah, 3 to the power of n is going to be the reciprocal of that, which is 5. Now I can work out, because this is the same as 3 to the 4n, because the rule is x to the a to the b is just simply x to the ab. What we can now do is raise both sides to the power of 4 to find that 3 to the 4n is 5 to the power of 4, and therefore 3 to the power of 4 to the power of n, because it's exactly the same as 3, as 3 to the 4n, is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, which is 625. If you did use logarithms there, you had to have the answer exact. I'll just warn you about that. Okay, question 15. What have we got here? Well, we've got a circle and we've got a segment and a sector. They love these kinds of questions. Remember, when you get these kinds of questions, the seggy area is always sector with minus triangle and then you've got the segment so that's pretty much what i'm going to do in this one yeah so the area of the triangle is going to be a half times 30 times 30 times by sine 80 that's the formula i'm using for this one and that comes to i'm just using my calculator 450 sine 80 make sure it's in degrees mine's in radians at the moment so i've got to change that uh so 450 sin 80 443.16 yeah okay that's the area of the triangle the area of the sector or the pizza slice if you like can I draw it like that that's what I'm finding now well that's going to be equal to maybe I should have drawn my triangle above upside down let's do it just to make it really clear what I'm doing okay the area of the sector is just going to be um 80 over 360 times by pi r squared, pi times by 30 squared. And that comes to, just typing it in, 200 pi, which is 628.3. I'm just going to write it as 200 pi, actually. It's nice to have it exact there. OK, right. Now we can find out the shaded area. The shaded area is just going to be this minus this. 200 pi minus 443.16 and that comes to 185.16 we've now found the area of this bit so if we want to work out the percentage of the area of the circle that is shaded we're just going to have to do 185.16 and divide it by the area of the circle now the area of the circle is just pi times 30 squared and then times by 100 and you'll have it as a percentage so let's do that divided by 900 pi and then times by 100 and you get 6.5 percent and i hope that's nice and clear yeah um did they want it uh, to any kind of special degree of accuracy? I tell you what, I probably should do it to three significant figures. I know in A-level anyway, they're obsessed with three significant figures. So there we go, 6.55%. Uh, okay, next one. Question 16. Ah, oh, this one, yeah. This one wasn't too bad. It was answered pretty good. Most people realise that the line X plus Y is less than or equal to 6 should go through 6 
and 6, not 7 and 7. So one mistake is x plus y equals 6 has been drawn incorrectly. as x plus y equals 7 <laughs> and that's just because if you ever got a line like that you know x plus y equals 6 why does it go through 6 and 6 well when x is 0 y is 6 so it passes through 0 6 and when y is 0 x is 6 so it passes through 6 0 yeah um, and so it should be like that now there's two other errors you could have used after this firstly he shaded in the wrong side for um both of these inequalities, I think, actually. So those are both the errors. Because this is a line y equals x plus 2. Now, OK, on this side here, you've actually got the situation where y is less than or equal to x plus 2. Yeah. So he should have shaded this side. Yeah. Um, if the region is, you know, uh, giving you the shading is giving you basically where all these regions are true. He should have shaded this side. So that's the easiest way to get that one. Just say um, he shaded the wrong side. of y equals x plus 2. Um, you could have also had though there this, this is y is greater than or equal to 0, that's a, um, a, sorry, that's above the line, that's all, all the positive y coordinates. What he's done is shaded, or she's done, whatever it's Helen actually, will, um, is shaded x is greater than or equal to 0, like that's, that's wrong as well. So you could have had any of those three. Okay, trapezium rule. Let me remind you what the formula is for trapezium rule. The formula is area equals Strip width over 2, ends plus 2 times middles. It's the easiest way to do these questions if you ask me. Um, it's really not that bad. Now we're trying to estimate from 1 up to 4, yeah? Free, uh, free strips, yeah? And if you, you know, um, aren't familiar with this, by all means, you know, ask a math teacher about it. It's such an easy, easier way of doing it. Strip width is just the width of each trapezia, yeah? so it's 1. Uh, the ends are the end y coordinates. Now, I found people were mainly going wrong because they weren't being precise enough here. Now, look at this. We're going 3, 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.8, 4. Each little square is a point 2. And so this first one here is actually 3.6. Yeah, that's your first end. Yeah, it's the y coordinates you care about here, not the x coordinates. Your final end, because we're going from 1 to 4, well, that's across here. And I think that comes to 9.6. So I need 9.6. And then the middles are just the two y coordinates here and here. Uh, what is that? 6.4 and 8.4. Yeah. People weren't sometimes precise enough. There was like tolerance in the answer, but they weren't precise enough. So you've got to do plus 2 times 6.4 plus 8.4. And then we're going to work that out. Um, Let's have a look. Where's my calculator? One second. Uh, just tapping away at it. And it comes to 21.4, I believe. And there you go. That's how you do the trapezium rule. Now, in terms of what we've just found, this is a speed time graph. And if you ever find the area of a speed time graph, you're finding the distance travelled. But look, here's the thing. It's worth two marks. So... They clearly want something a bit more than distance travelled. So just start being ever so precise in metres <laughs> between the time, between the times, between the first and fourth second. Or between, yeah, yeah, between the first and fourth second. Uh, I'm, I'm actually just going to write between t equals one. And fourth second. There we go. Done. Yeah, just be slightly paranoid. I think they really wanted distance travelled in metres. And you can see that in the question. They actually do tell you that it's in metres per second. So you want to say distance travelled in metres. Um, explain whether your answer gives an underestimate or an overestimate. Well, because we flattened out the curve and the curve was above that for our trapezium, this is actually going to be an underestimate. underestimate as the chords here are below the curve. Okay, 18. 
these are a bit silly these questions they're new ones like to the syllabus like uh, they're uh, I call them like permutations and combinations but I think they just call them the product rule for counting I think that's the way it's described in the syllabus now we've got 95 girls 87 boys in year 13 one girl is going to be chosen for the role of head girl so there's 95 choices yeah but then there's another girl a different girl obviously going to be chosen for the role of deputy head girl so that's 94 yeah but for each girl and boy there's going to be one boy chosen for head you know for, sorry for each head girl and deputy head girl the next choice for boy you know let, let's say right let me just give you a quick, quick example here. i just want to show you why we're now going to times by 87 and then times by 86 it's because you know you've got 95 times 94 which is some big number where is it? i'll do quickly do it my calculator 95 times 94 yeah so there's 8930 possible choices for the girls yeah but let's say jane and uh jenny get chosen yeah well the best way to put this is like you could have chosen like uh i don't know alex for head boy yeah but then you could have chosen um well what about uh i don't know uh <laughs> i'm just thinking of students names in my class now daniela yeah danny ella and Jenny yeah could have been with Alex do you see how we're just going to have to times this because think about like um I sometimes call them possibility trees you've got 95 possibilities just for head girl then you've got 94 branches coming off of each one of those 95 and that's why we're timesing it but then off these you're going to have 87 coming off each of those and then you're going to have 86 off of that and that's why we need to times it uh, all out it comes to some ridiculously big number so I can understand if you did this and thought no that can't be right I do know where you're coming from because you get like six six eight <laughs> one four two six oh so a lot of different ways yeah like 66 million possible ways of choosing head boy and head girl and deputy head boy and deputy head girl there we go okay uh number 19 almost there <laughs> three more to go okay now this is interesting because i quite like to do this with vectors let's see um okay draw a little picture and it's much easier to find them yeah p to q yeah p is minus nine seven q is eleven twelve what's the vector p q well it's how you get from p to q yeah vectors are really handy on these kinds of questions we're going from minus nine up to eleven i think that's add twenty and then we're going from seven up to twelve i think that's add five yeah i'm just checking that i've written those down right yeah that's good now if you want to go and find a point m such that pm to mq is two to three well pm is clearly just two fifths of pq yeah and so what i can do now is just times that vector pq by two fifths what's two fifths of 20 well one fifth of 20 is four so two fifths is eight what's two fifths of five well it's clearly two yeah now that means to get from p to m i need to add eight to this one giving me minus one and i need to add two to that one giving me nine so m is the point minus one nine i've now found m yeah you can just put on you know with a nice little diagram like this it just makes it so obvious it's just because that vector is two fifths of this big vector pq yeah like it makes it much easier doing it like this okay l is perpendicular to pq so let's quickly work out the gradient of pq the gradient of pq is going to be change in y which is five over change in x which is 20. notice they're both going up so my gradient is positive and this is a quarter and so the gradient of which we're interested in the perp gradient is just a negative reciprocal of that and that's minus four and so what are we going to have here well you're going to have if you like y equals minus 4x plus c I know this is the way most GCSE students like to do this one, so I will. Then we need a point on the line to find C. Well, that point is minus one nine because this line is coming down like this. Yeah. And so let's just plug in Y is nine when X is minus one. And you're going to get four plus C. You can see C is five and you get Y equals minus four X plus five. And it's done. Yeah, that's quite, uh, I'd say that's quite a tricky question, really. This one's slightly easier if you ask me. Um, okay, right. This is one of these uh, exponential equations where you find constants. And it's just by plugging numbers in. 
It really is. So we've got y equals pq to the x. Now I'm going to plug in this one first, just because I like working with zero. I find zero really easy to work with, because look at this, pq to the zero. But what is anything to the power of zero? One. And so five equals p. Smashing. Right, I'm now going to work with this one to try and find q, because I know it starts y equals 5q to the x now, but I also know that 405 equals 5 times by q to the power of 4. So if I do 405 divided by 5, um, what is 405 divided by 5? 400 divided by 10 is 40, so divided by 5 is 80, 81. Yeah? Uh, so you get 81 is q to the 4, and the fourth root of 81, if you fourth root it, you get q is 3. OK, we've now discovered that the equation is y equals 5 times 3 to the power of x. So now I can just plug in x is 2 to find k. So y equals 5 times by 3 squared. That looks to me to be 45. Done. OK, last one. Woohoo. OK, we've got to the vectors question. Now, this one is not a bad vectors question. I've seen them a lot worse than this. This is not too bad. But I know vectors are hard for students Like when they first meet them. It seems weird. It's, you know, you don't do loads of geometry, really. Well, we do more now, like circle geometry and stuff like that. But it is weird when you first meet vectors. So what do we know here? A is the midpoint of OZ. Cool. So I'm just going to write one to one on a diagram. It just reminds me and they're, they're in the ratio of one to one. Y is the midpoint of AB. So one to one once again. Um, X is a point on OB. Yeah, it's just a point on OB. OK, it's not really saying much there. But we do know that OX is 2b yeah from there to there try and make that as clear as possible that is clear as mud uh, <laughs> that's a bit straighter okay so that's a vector 2b xb is just a b okay so we can see that ratio now it's actually two to one um and oa is just a vector a yeah Cool. OK, right. Uh, we're in a position to do this. We've got to prove that X, Y, Z is a straight line. Now, there's a number of ways you can do this, but we will need to find either X, Y and X, Z or X, Y and Y, Z or Y, Z and X, Z. In other words, you've got to find two out of the three possible letter pairings you can take there. We need to find two out of three. Um, let's find X, Z first. Yeah, because X, Z looks pretty easy. X, Z is just going to be minus 2B. Plus, well, that's A, so that's A because it's a midpoint, so plus 2A. Cool, yeah? And now what are we going to find? Well, it's really up to you. We can find X, Y, or we can find Y, Z. And I'll show you the argument at the end. Let's find, um, do you want to find uh, Y, Z? Yeah, Should we find Y, Z? Well, to get from Y to Z, I'm going to go right the way around the houses. I'm going to go from Y to B, B to O, and then O to Z. And I'm not saying this is the quickest way. Um, this is just the way it occurred to me to do it. Um, to do YB, we really need to know AB. So kind of up here, just quickly note what AB is. AB is going to be minus A plus 3B. And that implies that YB is going to be exactly half of that. Yeah. So YB is going to be minus a half A plus 3 over 2. B, yeah? BO is obvious because it's 3B, and OZ is obvious because it's 2A. So let's write it down. Minus a half A, plus 3 over 2B. Okay, plus the BO, which is minus 3B. Get the direction right. The direction is everything in vectors. It's always important. That's not OB, it's BO. So minus 3B. And then we're going to have plus 2A. OK, right, let's put it all together now. What have we got? Well, minus a half A plus 2A is 3 over 2A. And then 3 over 2B minus 3B, well, that's minus 3 over 2B. Yeah. Now, notice that, especially if we wrote this the other way around, 2A minus 2B, that this is a scalar multiple of this. Yeah. You can now just argue, well, since... Uh, yz and xz are scalar multiples 
you know and if you really want to convince the examiner just say like uh probably the easiest way to say it is like x said times by three quarters equals y z let me just check my maths there three quarters of two is one and a half so yeah you know this is just one and a half um, or you could have done it four thirds on the other side of the equals completely up to you this demonstrates that they're parallel this proves they're parallel but we're trying to show it's a straight line and all we've shown so far is that two vectors are parallel ah oh, but actually they've got a point in common yeah and if you've got two vectors like here's one vector Oh, but it's got a point in common to another vector which is parallel all of a sudden you know they lie on a straight line hence um, as they share a common point and that common point is z as they share the common point z x y z must be a straight line and you're not going to get away with full marks here unless you write some kind of full conclusion like that at the end yeah just express yourself and convince the examiner you know what you're talking about okay hope that was useful uh thanks for listening and all the best with your gcse revision bye bye